Hello and welcome to the table. Uh, we're going to be covering a game called Dungeon Crusade, Book One: Genesis of Evil. Uh, this game is made by Roger Deering, and um, I would say that this. Well, first of all, this was a Kickstarter from 2016, and at the it, this arrived two days ago, and it is January of 2021 right now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, also, as a disclaimer, Roger is a uh, friend of mine on Facebook. Um, and uh, I would say a, a very decent friend. But um, uh, so I give that disclaimer because, you know, people accuse you of bias or whatever. Uh, they're welcome to do so. But um, uh, I also know Corey Kaniska. I also have met the Sadler brothers. I don't know if they remember me. Uh, Richard Lanius. Would not know me by name, but he would definitely know me if he saw my face, because we've met many times. Um, I know a lot of the folks at Fantasy Flight Games. I mean, it goes on and on. I mean, Colin from One Stop Co-op Shop, uh, he's met me. And uh, Rodney Smith has uh, played a board game with me. Um, I think he remembers it. Uh, I bet if I explained to him what we played and, and when, he would remember. Um... But with that said, I, I do know a lot of the folks out there, and um, I don't think it's ever stopped me because Corey Kaniska designed one of the most horrible games I've ever played, and I think I reviewed it on here and said so. Um, and uh, and what the big shame was is he was really excited about that one and um, <coughs> didn't like it at all. Um, but anyways, this one has a... Kickstarter from 2016, and just to show how crazy it gets, um, this is one of the Guardian cards. Look at that. Copyright 2016. <laughs> um, so I feel like I'm playing an ancient game, even though it's brand new. Um, and so, yeah, the artwork on this game is really cool. This is one of the bosses that you can fight up against, and uh, there's three different types of attack. We can get into that later. Um, but, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, this is, as far as games that I own that are overwhelming, this is near the top. I think 18OE is probably the most epic game I've ever owned. I've done two full playthroughs of 18OE on here. And I bet I've played that game over 30 times. It's probably still one of the most played games in my arsenal. Um, it's because I love 18OE and I'm not... Sure, I love other 18xx games. It's just 18OE, for whatever reason, is my favorite. Um, but with that said, uh, Invasions, I think, is the most epic game. It is like it's, it's recently toppling it. And Invasions is a game that I will never get to my table because I don't know if I can ever find somebody who's willing to play that with me. And I'm not sure I ever will. Um, this game is now sitting on the same tier as those. Alter Quest was a lot. We just finished recording and, and talking about Alter Quest. Alter Quest was an awful lot. Uh, I have games that have a lot of components. Like Alter Quest has a ton of miniatures. This game, it, it's insane with some of the stuff it's doing. And if you were to ask Roger, he'll tell you it's a very easy, simple game. And he might be right in terms of rules. Uh, it's just that it's overwhelming to look at. And um, here, let me just give you like an example. This is the dungeon board set up for scenario one. Because I'm trying to, you know, learn how to play so I can actually uh, look like I know what I'm talking about. This is the dungeon. And, and don't mind the stuff that's sitting on top. I'm talking about the these boards down here, right? So from this end all the way over to here is the dungeon, Okay, so when you play the dungeon portion of the game, you're playing on that much of my table. And that's a very large section of the table. Well, then in addition to that, let me set some of this stuff aside. Um, you have a game of chance, which you don't need to have out while you're doing the dungeon board part. But um, you've got these games of chance. But while the dungeon board is out, you do need this. This is like the um, old... This is like how you keep track of the threat levels in the 
the you know what phases of combat you're in and you know how many quests what level quests have you accomplished and you know things of that nature this is you know and you actually put you shuffle decks of cards and you put them here this is going to be somehow set up next to the board in a way that it's also a part of the game okay so you got this let me set that off to the side and then you also have this which is the village and that also needs to somehow take up space i mean these aren't small i mean look how big that village is compared to the actual dungeon boards themselves <clears throat> so i gotta find a place for that and then on top of it you're going to have not one, not two, but six heroes to control. And <clears throat> so from the footprint perspective, this game is just insane in terms of how much space it's going to take up. Now, um, <clears throat> you heard me correctly. You're going to control six heroes. That's not negotiable. You can't go down to one or two. You always have to do six. And then it's also very important to point out that the scenario book has ten scenarios in it, but... Um, we need to talk about base game versus the, the blinged out, I think it's called Monster Edition or Master Edition or something like that. I have the Master Edition, so I have, I think, everything there is to have, okay? Um, I will be honest. I told Roger I'm not a big fan of these, these games of chance. Um, we're going to see how that plays out. I don't know what to think of them. Um, they, to him, they're very thematic, and to me, they're not. <laughs> So, um, I mean, maybe if I was in some bar back in the medieval times, you know, and whatnot, Games of Chance, I'm sure, was a thing. But, um, like, to me, it's not necessary to do it. But um, but it's here. We're going to try it. And the good news is, is we can cut it out if you don't like it. Um, I have a feeling I'm not going to hate it. It's just I'm not going to be in love with it either. But we'll find out. Um, <clears throat> the... Uh, there are two things that I read on Board Game Geek that are criticisms of this game. And so far, I think both of them seem fair. The first one is, it takes an hour to set this game up. So in Jeff terms, that might mean that I'm going to have a two-hour setup video. And then it takes, uh, this this rule book is 69 pages. And people complained about how it's laid out and how it's missing important information. I can tell you, I already found something missing from it. And friend or not, um, I know... What I can tell you is I know Roger spent months working on this rule book. Months. I mean, if not, maybe a full year. Um, and so for him to know that he missed something is probably going to... He's going to take it harder than anybody, but he did. And and the thing that he missed is these dungeon boards are double-sided. And so let me grab one real quick here. This dungeon board here has this side, and then there's another side to it. And when you put it up against the rest of the dungeon, you can see that the dungeon has these pastel -y fluorescent, you know, colors around, and then this one doesn't. So it's very easy to tell which side is which, right? But um, there's nothing on the actual board to tell you that this is the AR dungeon, which is uh, Ancient Ruins. So this represents the Ancient Ruins. Nothing on here tells you that this is the Ancient Ruins. And... Um, the actual quest card right here even has a little AR symbol for Ancient Ruins. It's really awesome, right? Um, <clears throat> so the card says AR. It tells you it's Ancient Ruins. And then you look at the board, and there's nothing on there that tells you it's Ancient Ruins. So you have to just know that this is the Ancient Ruins side. And then you have to also know, like, there's six of them. Like, I, I took one of them out. There's six. Like, what's the orientation of them? Well... It doesn't tell you. So you have to look at these little footprints. This is how the enemies move around, right? They got these little AI rules. Well, the footprints will connect from one to the next. That's how you uh, do You got to basically connect them all together. Um, it was a huge miss by the rule book. And I have to confess, I was very frustrated with this. Because uh, I was like, well, what the hell? What do I do? Um, now that I sort of got some of the tricks figured out, um, it's probably not so bad. But, but still... It, it's, you know, it was a big miss. Let's just put it that way. So, um, I mentioned that there's a Master Edition. There's actually three levels to this game. Please don't ask me what's in what level. I think it's actually spelled out in the rule book. Uh, he actually goes through that. 
Um, right here, there's the Knight of the Realm edition, the Crusader of the Realm, and then Master of the Realm. And then there's add-ons, and we have all of them. Everything. We have the Master of the Realm plus these add-ons. Um, so I don't want to get into all the nuances, but there's a couple major things to talk about. The first one is that the scenario book has 10 scenarios. Those 10 scenarios use four dungeons. How do I know four? Because this is a dungeon map for the ancient ruins. We've been talking about this. And then if you flip it over, it's the the something, uh, TLK. It's some, uh, some uh, TK. Oh, I can't remember what TK stands for, but it, but it's another dungeon, okay? And it's, um, uh, it, I think it comprises of five scenarios out of the ten in the rule book. And, and this is the scenario book, by the way. And the scenario numbers don't mean anything, really. You've got scenario one here, which uses the ancient ruins. But, like, scenario ten, which is at the end, is using the Tomb of Kaladar, and that's the TK these these come with the base game. So scenario 10 works with the base game. Scenario 1 works with the base game. But some of the ones in the middle don't. Now, we have new dungeon boards over here. That's what you see. Uh, that's what this is right here. And, of course, those are also double-sided. So you're going to have four total dungeons before this is said and done. And uh, one of them is going to be like a, a manor or baron. Uh, let's see. We got You can see here we got a lot of ancient ruins. Castle Blackwood's one of them. And then there's going to be the Cavern of Lost Souls, okay? So you have scenarios for for all four, but you don't get all four in the base game. So uh, you have to buy... So with the Crusader of the Realm, you get the Avalon Adventure uh, game board. And then you get the... Um, with the Master Edition, you get the... Oh, you're getting all the games of chance and stuff with this one. And then right here, the double dungeon pack. It includes one double-sided dungeon that features Castle Blackwood. So if you didn't buy this double dungeon pack, uh, you're missing out on five scenarios. Okay, so five scenarios uh, are missing from the game if you don't do that. Okay, so if you're ever thinking of buying the game, definitely look at the double dungeon pack. I would think that that should be a top priority for you. The other thing that might you might want to consider to be a priority is the game comes with six heroes. They look like this. So they have some pretty cool hero cards, right? And um, and you can see that there's the various skills and attributes on, on the right. Okay, there are exactly six heroes that come with the game. You must play with a minimum of six heroes every time you play. So you don't get to choose your six heroes, unless you buy the hero expansion. And with the hero expansion, you get six new heroes. So then you'll have a total of 12. And then also I got the expert difficulty monster deck and the heroic difficulty monster deck. Um, they are over here to the right. And uh, let me zoom out. So they are here. And uh, they are, like, identical to the regular monster deck. Of course they would be. It's not like they, they don't add different monsters. They're just the same monsters on steroids. Um, so uh, this Razor Fang, you know, is a guardian. And you'll find... Well, actually, here, right here. There's Razor Fang right there on the normal monster deck. So you could sort of, like, see if you put him side by side. Like, right here, he's got seven health. And here he has eight. I mean, just a quick cursory... You know, thing, and then with his attack, you can see fourteen two, and he's got fifteen two up here. So, so he's already you know beefed up with this. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is like, how can I tell, like, if these cards got dropped on the floor, how would I know which one's which if they got mixed together? And that I don't know, folks, except for this part right here with the two skulls. I think that's how you tell them apart. Um, so, with that being said, I've been intentionally keeping this separate until I sort that out. And I think the skull thing is correct. And because if you look at the third one, there's three skulls. So I think that I'm on to something there. And I'm probably correct about that. But um, anyways, <clears throat> uh, it's a massive game. 
is what I'm trying to say. And uh, I really think the double dungeon pack in the Heroes expansion is necessary. The Master of the Realm comes with these games of chance, which I just told you I'm not a certain I'm going to like. Um, in fact, when I backed this game, I backed it at the Crusader level, and then I changed it to the Master level because I was like, you know, I wanted to support Roger, give him the extra bits, and then also uh, I think this game, you know, if it turns out to be a great game, it's going to become something that collectors are going to want, and they're going to want the ma they're going to want everything, not the almost everything. So. Anyways, it's up to you and your pocketbook on what you want to do. Uh, this, I thought, was worth it. Uh, it comes with the Avalon Adventure Game Board. So let's talk about that. This game is three games in one. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick your six heroes, and then you're going to go on an Avalon Adventure, which is this board that I'm trying to grab here. So this game board is the Avalon Adventure Game Board. And you're going to actually move around on this game board, and it's like a choose-your-own-adventure. You're going to actually do a whole game, like a mini-game, with its own set of rules here. And the people in Board Game Geek said it would take, it takes about a half hour, once you know what you're doing. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to do this for however long, and then this is going to wrap up. And then and only then do we actually do the dungeon. Okay? And then once we do the dungeon... After we win in the dungeon, the dungeon's going to have three levels of quests. And so, for example, uh, this is scenario seven, Fall of the Briarwood. It has quest table level one, level two, level three. And then there's, uh, you can see there's two quests for each one. And then there's a third quest that, that covers all three levels, okay? And so what you're going to do is you're going to grab these little quest cards. And um, this Baron's Wine is on top because... The very first scenario, which is the one we're going to try, Into the Depths, uh, you can see here the Baron's Wine is the main quest for level one. So that's this card, and it's going to have some flavor text. We'll read it. And then if you flip it over, there's a whole setup section. So each quest has its own setup. And so this board is going to fill in section by section with doors and all kinds of goodies. It's actually going to be awesome sauce. This is doing the thing that I wished Alter Quest did. Alter Quest is all about, you know, the whole board is empty until you fill it in by moving into a room. This one, the board is going to be completely full of, of all kinds of stuff. You're not necessarily going to know because tokens will be upside down and randomized, but you at least got an idea of what you're trying to do. Okay. <clears throat> now, and then he has, like, you roll dice. And, for example, the Bizarre Inventory... You roll dice. If you roll one, there's going to be eight healing potions available for you to purchase, or three. You can get really screwed on what's in the inventory. The blacksmith is going to have inventory of common items to legendary items. And then what's even crazier is, um, and see, this is like, see, he says master, expert, hard, normal, easy, novice. So uh, what R Roger recommends is if you could just roll dice and get a whole mix of of values or if you just want to play normal mode you just go right down the middle and use the three number so it's your choice you can mix it up or you can just pick you know let's play normal and just do normal okay um uh same you know there's some seating some monsters that get seated here and the same with the, the terror level the village the raid difficulty everything is um has gauges and dials that you can you can move around okay so uh, the cool thing about the blacksmith is that let's say he's going to build you in some new armor. He doesn't just make you armor and charge you 200 gold pieces. You actually go mining in this game. And so there's going to be certain spots where you can go mining and you actually get minerals that you have to find in the dungeon. There's an actual mining deck. And you can see like this obsidian, you know. So you got to bring minerals back to fulfill the requirements to get the blacksmith to make an item for you. Uh, so all kinds of cool stuff. So you do Avalon Hill, you do the dungeon, and then after you win the dungeon, it's still not over. Then there's this thing called Celebration Day. And that's where you come back and you do the games of chance. And there's actually gifts that you get for your heroes. And uh, we haven't, I haven't opened this yet and looked at it. But anyways, um, it comes with all kinds of crazy stuff. I have a whole, I have an actual deck of cards that came with the game called Skulljack, which I'm assuming is a blackjack type of thing. So the game... Um, 
is massive. So should you choose to accept it, thank you for joining me at the table. Uh, I got to get through a lot, a 69 page rule book. Um, there's a lot to do, but uh, if you'll bear with me, uh, I will get this to the table very soon and we will do a proper playthrough. And um, I uh, really hope uh, you enjoy this one. I'm hoping to enjoy this one. Uh, Alter Quest really grew on me. I didn't like it the first time I played it, um, but I started to like it more and more, especially multiplayer. This one is meant to be played solo. I mean, you can play it as multiple with multiple players, but it's meant to be played solo. And um, I don't know. I just really have my hopes high for this. I even stopped playing Alter Quest so I could switch to this one. And I'm hoping I made the right choice. Anyways, uh, as always, thank you for watching and stay healthy and safe.